Hey, Crawl Spacers, welcome to our first video podcast. Hopefully, you're watching this on YouTube. And let's introduce the panel. We've got Ashley. What's going on, Ashley? Hey. She's got Spider Girl oh, ear yeah. earrings. Let's see them. Let's see. There you go. Plus the shirt. And you got a Spider Girl shirt or Spider Man shirt on the girl. There you go. I'm, I'm matching. I brought Spider Man on me, too. And we've got Mike. Looking like the Green Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured since everyone has been confusing Zach and my our, my voice, I might as well wear a hoodie since I'm supposedly his clone. So there you go. Yeah, clone represent. But um, yeah, but all seriousness, it's so great to be back on and everything like that. Yeah. All right. And we've got Zach holding up his uh, six-inch Scarlet Spider. Yes, like... <laughs> yes. Not to be confused with the mythical twelve. There you go. We can actually see if it's 12 inches or 6 well, inches. Well, I don't want to show that on the particular show. Nobody wants that on the first show, no, yeah. No. <laughs> Maybe at the oh. uh, the crawl space after dark. I think Ashley just kind of won with her 29 <laughs> figure. There you she go. Represent. Yeah. The actual 29.9 figure as opposed to... And, and the man, the myth, the legend, the goblin... JR, what's going on, JR? I love I love the green and purple, my friend. Well, I dressed for the occasion. I thought this was a special occasion and it warranted a little dressing up, of course. And, and actually and, I have worn I have oh, worn this ahead. ensemble to work, by the way. So uh, <laughs> and unfortunately nobody nobody got the joke. So mm -hmm. well, we did instantly. Tell me what's over your shoulder. What's over well, your shoulder? Well, that's my here? friend Harvey. My friend Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a goblin, well, what, not a rat. <laughs> What do you mean? Oh, I, there's a number of things. There's toys, there's yeah. pictures, there's all kinds of stuff. So that's very cool. But uh, the pictures well, are uh, things, artwork from the kids over the years. So and they a sentimental goblins. old man keeps. Spencer did it. that one years ago. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, we're going to be reviewing this issue. Look at that. Beautiful looking Alex Ross cover. Yeah, they've all been good. But, uh, but... Oh, okay. Just because it's got a great cover, you know, that doesn't mean it's got good inside. By the way, we need to we need to reference the fact that uh, our bacon chopping Texan is not here. Oh, oh yes. you know, I yes, George. Uh, unfortunately, uh, his appendix burst, and he's in the hospital at the moment. Uh, he's doing good. They removed it, and he's going to be in the hospital for the next couple of days. So, you know, it'd be nice if uh, you maybe um, when I put this up. Send George a couple well wishes. Yeah, send him a yeah, PM on our message board. It's really nice. Yeah, because you know we were going to miss him. We miss him around here, yeah. and so you know, good, good to show him some love and support and everything like this. And so the people are out there. Yeah, yeah. Texas represent. Yeah, there you go. So and feel make better. Sure you eat lot, and make sure you eat some bacon and uh, yeah. too. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe take it a little easy while you're in the hospital. Yes, yeah, right. So. A uh, little rundown of this show. We're going to review two issues: Amazing Spider-Man Volume Four, Number Seven, and Number Eight. We're also going to do something new with this show. Uh, we're going to do um, miniature satellites. I've, I've eliminated the satellite show. I'm going to compress them and put them in the amazing show. Uh, different panelists are going to be tackling issues. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say, what's happening in the book? What do you like? What do you hate? What's the grade? So we're going to do those in about two minutes a book, fly through those. But we're going to spend much of the time of this show tackling Amazing Spider-Man. And, Jr., you've got uh, issue seven, so take me through uh, issue seven. Well, don't you do, like, written by, drawn by? Sure, I'm so sorry. We've stuff. got written by, still Dan Slott, uh, Matteo Buffagani? Buffagani? Raise your hand if you read for a living. Well, now, look, I can flip you <laughs> off in front of all these youth, but I'm not going to. I'm resisting. So, Buffagani and Slot. Go ahead, JR. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> well, boys and girls, today we are going to read Amazing Spider-Man Volume 4, Number 7. <laughs> See, there's Spider-Man, there's, there's Cloak, and there's Dagger. Now, you know yeah. Cloak and Dagger, right, boys and girls? They're minor characters that aren't that nobody cares enough about for them to support their own series. So writers keep putting them in the series of the superheroes that people actually want to read about. I mean, you know, I know that when I pay my three ninety nine for an amazing Spider Man comic, I want to see some kind of C level character that can't hold their own title. So anyway, what is the story? Well, boys and girls, Peter Parker is in China. You know where China is, boys? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, 
Oh, China, China is in the Eastern Hemisphere, see? It, and it's this blue country right here. All right, now see the rest of this? This is the Pacific Ocean. China <laughs> claims that it owns everything in the Pacific Ocean. Okay? All right, so Peter Parker is in China, all right? And, and China, just to let you know, is, is a country that supports intellectual property theft and cyber attacks. But Peter has no problem doing business over there, even though that, even though Parker Industries is going to be robbed blind while he's in China. But anyway, oh, and this was this was China, everybody. Okay, and for, if you've seen the Deadpool movie, this is Bernadette Peters. All right. <laughs> now, if you know, if you've seen the Deadpool movie, you know what Mr. Jr. is going to be doing with Bernadette later on. Wow. She's six, wow. She, she, she is six, just turned 68 years old, which means she's right up Mr. JR's alley. <laughs> All right. Well, boys and girls, let's get into the story here. <sighs> well, this this is better than the story, actually. <laughs> that, ex that escalated quickly. Oh, man. Well, I think well so last issue, that bad old Mr. Like, Negative touched Peter in a bad <laughs> <laughs> thinking his negative touch would turn Peter back and make him do his bidding. Boo, Mr. Negative, boo. Uh -oh. Now, Mr. Negative wants Peter to slap a drug patch called Shade on some old bald dude. And then this old bald dude will tell the world about all the horrible shit he's done in his life. Like forcing Mr. Negative into a gang and selling people to, in, as slaves. and So Mr. Negative wants revenge. But aha, Peter Parker is smart. And he, he knows that Mr. Negative's corrupting touch works only once. And he used it on him while he was Spider-Man back in a miniseries that more people probably used as toilet paper than actually read. Oh, dear. Well, Cloak and Dagger, who are under Mr. Negative's control, are going back with him to the lair. So Spider-Man plants a spider tracer on Cloak so he can follow them later. All right, Peter brings a sample of Shade to Dr. Wu, who works for Parker Industries and Medical Research. So he can now, come now, up now with... Now, sh Shade is a bad thing with the kids, right? You don't want to cast any shade on You don't want to throw shade on people. Here. Exactly, no shade. No shade. No shade. Mr. Potato Head <laughs> says no who's, shade. Wait, 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 wait. Who's telling this story? Who's uh, telling this story? Uh, Mr. Rogers. It, it, it's Mr. JR. It's, Sorry, it's Mr. Mr. Fetish. This is Mr. JR's neighborhood, all right? Okay. Now, Dr. Ru, Wu is supposed to come up with Dr. Ruth. Dr. Wu <laughs> is supposed to come up with an antidote. But Dr. Wu is grumpy. Dr. Wu doesn't like Peter Parker, Spider Man, and he doesn't like foreigners being in China. Why is so, he working for an American company then? He'll take our money, but you so, know he doesn't. Yeah, okay. so, can can you say xenophobic <laughs> douchebag? <laughs> I think you can. And if you can't, well, you know, get out of the Missouri school system and get an education. Oh. <laughs> so anyway. So Spider-Man, Peter changes the Spider-Man and follows the signal from the spider tracer on Cloak. He tries to call Harry Osborne, who is running Parker Industries' New York office, but Harry's not answering his phone because he's out to dinner with his ex-wife and two sons, trying to work his way back into his ex-wife's pants. All right. Now, as they leave the restaurant, some horrible driver almost runs them over, but a super powered person stands in the way so that the car crashes into him. And who is this super powered person? Person? It's Regent. You remember You're bending your comic book. Ah! You remember Regent, boys and girls? He was the bad guy in Secret Wars Renew Your Vows miniseries and was pretty much the weakest part of the story. So, uh, <laughs> so it only makes sense to bring him into the current continuity. Absolutely. Thanks, Dan Slot. So, Spider-Man tracks Cloak down to Mr. Negative's shade drug lab and busts it up, but Cloak and Dagger get away. The sheen, sheen, the scene shifts to Ms. Tang, who Sir, who's Peter's house squeeze at Parker Industries and also supplies all the lemon or uh, orange drink there. 
So and, and oh, and dumplings too. And oh that. no, we find out that Ms. Tang is the one who's been giving the evil Scorpio, the incredibly boring villain who's trying to compromise Parker Industries, all the security codes. Scorpio has been giving her mom experimental drug treatments because her mom is dying. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> Since I can't see my nose without my friggin' glasses because I'm so old. Anyway, but he doesn't think that she has any he has she has any more use to him. She says, Oh no, but I'll kill Spider-Man for you. And he says, Well, how are you gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna run over him with my spider mobile that I built for him. <laughs> oh, all right, boys and girls. But I won't do it this issue because I've got to con all the suckers out there into paying another $3.99 to get the next part to be continued. All right, JR, what's your grade on this? I give, oops, I give it a D, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. To, we're liking the Brady Bunch. So, Zach, up on the top, what do you give this for a grade? Zach still can't hear you. Even with video, we got problems. Oh, Sorry. Hey, there how, you are. There you how are. About, uh, how about putting the, hitting the mute button? There you go. What's your grade, sir? My grade is going to be a D as well. This is a, mm, yeah, D. Yeah. By the way, the, the viewers saw your butt. Congratulations. When you, <laughs> back, when you walked back there. Yeah. Uh, I had to get Zach got back. Yeah. <laughs> I, had to get my, I had to get my comic book. See, I, I, oh, there you go. There's your comic book. Uh, Mike, what would you give this for a grade? Oh, I'll give it a D as well. Hey, why not? Right. <laughs> after Ashley, what's your grade? I'll throw another D in the bag. A D in the bag. <laughs> oh, would that be D Look, for it's a bag. D for the bag. bag. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also D. Uh, let's Jr. It, it saved it from an F. So, is there any pros for you? All jokes aside, not really. I usually, like I said, I reserve F for personally offensive stories. But they're honest to God. I, you know, I, I was going to say the cover's nice, but you know, I'm not yeah. the person who believes that the cover, you know, merits an upgrade in a grade like somebody else here. Yeah. Th this there's there's nothing to recommend this story. Boring villain, boring plot, boring everything. I mean, the only mm -hmm. thing I liked about this, and that's one of the reasons why I had you pick it, is because Harry's in it. That's the only thing that I kind of yeah, liked. That's, yeah. And that was the only connection to the original cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we don't see, that's the thing. You know, what's missing in this, all this stuff, is we, we never saw Peter offer Harry the job. I mean, it's like all we're doing is like, yeah. and I've said it before at Infinitum, I guess, it's like a pinball machine. We're just going around the world, boom, 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 boom. You know, I mean, I would rather have seen, you know, Peter come to Harry and say, Harry, you know, I've had, you know, life's been tough for you. You know, whatever, you want a job or you know, seeing how, how this, how Peter's sudden wealth and sudden fame and sudden, you know, being a corporate CEO affects all of those around him. Well, we ain't seeing any of that. You know, um, we're just seeing this. And who gives a shit about Ms. Tang? Jeez, it is, you know. Uh, and All she now, is now, is worth a bang. That's it, you know. <laughs> tang, 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 thank you, man. Uh, wow. The, uh, wow, Douglas. Was that bad? That's I'm so sorry. horrible. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend. Um, I can't even edit video out, can I? Uh, <laughs> and you're just realizing this now. now is Miss Tang the girlfriend? Is that who? Yeah, because I Asian, keep track of these characters. She's Asian sissy Ironwood. Is basically got it. Yeah, does one. Do, in, in seven issues, do we care about her at all? Has there been any d character development? Uh, I mean, how many of those issues has she been in? Except for like this is exactly the, this is the second one she's been in, actually. Really? Yes. Actually, this is, so she why, was in the beginning of the yeah, Shanghai she was, issue, she was issue number one, and then she was Do we in, have oh, any no, of... she was in, she was in issue yeah, number one. Yeah, I remember. Issue, oh, okay, so it's been, this is her third issue. So she was in yeah. issue number one. She was in an issue number, um, the last one. Five or six. Six, six, and then she was yeah. in this one. And this is the only. Do we thing think we have, have any emotional attachment to this character who we barely know? Well, no, because the problem yeah. because the problem is, I mean. The whole plot about her becoming, be kind of betrayed. The idea that Peter is getting betrayed, you know, kind of betrayed by his own girlfriend, would have been more interesting had we actually gotten to know her, you know, actually yes. met her and every and met her. If we actually, actually had, yeah, I I barely even know her name. Yeah, 
Well, they, it was also because they actually misspelled the name in her in this one too. Did they? Yeah, because it's actually spelled Lien instead of Liang. Um, it's like yeah. it's like L I E N, and then the next one is going to be L I A N. So, but keeping with the pros, do we have any pros out of anybody? Um, actually, I think the Harry, the scene with Harry Osborne and the and the Osborne clan, kind of getting back in touch with them and stuff like that. That that seemed to be a little bit more interesting dynamic. That's, that's my only. That's the only thing I like. Right, and also the fact. I mean, because and also I did appreciate the fact that you had Normie was in the scene, and he's kind of like kind of showing signs of kind of sibling jealousy towards the young. Yeah. The, I, like, the, I like that. Uh, yeah. He, he wondered if his dad even cared about him because he didn't try to save him. He's tried to save Stanley. Right. And so, yeah. yeah. But, and also I just find it interesting that he's that Harry and Liz, because remember they're now in two rival companies because yeah. Liz is head of Alchemax. who spider yeah. man 299 people will know that is an is the evil corporation and also parker industries is a competitor so right. conflict of Ash, ashley do you have any pros yeah that says no, it all I, <laughs> <laughs> and zach no pros for you either uh i i, I think the artwork fits the story yeah i guess so uh, as i'm reading it here on my ipad and yeah. and i think that the art's not bad. The art's not bad. Um, it's it, it's not as good as Old Man Pelvis, Cam and Coley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think that for this, the tone of the story, I think it fits. But again, yeah, is this better than than some of the other things that we've seen in the past? We'll talk about that later, I guess. Let's do since it's Jr.'s review. Let's do him first with cons. What's your biggest con, Jr.? Well, jeez, I don't know. I got a bunch of them. Uh, obviously, the fact that we don't have any emotional investment in any of these characters or mm-hmm. the situation whatsoever. Um, you know, uh, Regent. I mean, I wasn't interested in Regent in Renew Your Vows, so I had no interest in seeing him here. And actually, he ruins the scene with the Osbournes, you know, because then it becomes about Regent. Um, yeah. And he's getting his own event late, later on. Oh, oh, Regent is? is? Yes. Pow- they did in June, they're going to have this thing where a crossover between Spider-Man and the all-new, all-different Avengers and Iron Man, because re- it's all centered around Regent. Oh, jeez. I'm just going to put that on my calendar. Give me a second. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> the Marvel- hey, so the Marvel... I, I see Ashley's sarcasm. I like it. <laughs> the, the, the Marvel Diversity Squad's going to show up? Man. Mm, oh, you no, mean no, the web... The all-new, yeah. all-different... Yep. Fine. Avengers. This is all all. Uh, what what Avengers team is it? I don't even it's, know. It's um name. it's um it's the one it's all it's the one written by Mark Wade. Oh, so it's the Miles Morales. Yeah, one. and also and also Iron Man. I thought you were talking about the one with uh, Richter or something. No, I, I, no, 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 no. It's the current it's the current team. Okay. Yeah. Got it. You know the thing I don't understand. You know, you just talked about this upcoming miniseries, and I I almost wonder how long that was in the. Um, was in the planning stage because really, I mean, after renew your vows, did anybody want to see region again? Was there any like, God, that's a cool villain. I'd like to see, I don't recall there being anything. And yet we're going to have a mini series based around him. And well, not like, necessarily. No, it's not a mini series. It's actually, it's part of the, it's actually part of the amazing Spider-Man. It's proper. Okay. But, so you'll read part one in amazing part. Two no, no, it's amazing. actually, no, it, well, suppose, supposedly it's all going to be written by Dan Slott in amazing. Because it's starting mm-hmm. with it's starting with issue twelve. So, so we'll have we'll have more Avengers in this book. Yep. And we don't have enough. Yep. Okay. Oh, and apparently, since Iron, since Mary Jane is with Iron Man now, is 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 the new Pepper Potts over in Iron Man? Supposedly, maybe she's going to be appearing back in this issue as well. So. So. So again, we're paying we're paying for Amazing Spider Man, and we're getting the Avengers again. I mean. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, oh, and Iron so and Iron I, Man. So, but. So I think bottom line, this issue was sort of like this. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's sort of what you clean up with that. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, except, yeah. See, Brad, that has that has an original story on it. That's, <laughs> that, that's some merit. Wait, here, let's open the pop, top of it. Dude, you're oh. you're devaluing the thing. You just destroyed the collector's value. Spider Man toilet paper. Here we go. Oh. Look, there's a story. Oh wow. Okay. Yep. And character development. <laughs> Look. <laughs> The sad thing is, is this he hunted this thing for he hunted this thing down for yeah, years. I, I, 
Yeah, I bought that on eBay. That was that was like a twenty dollar roll of toilet paper. So so what do you do? Like you read a panel, wipe your ass, read a panel, wipe your ass. Is that how it goes? Yep, that's what you do with it. <laughs> oh. hey. hey Ashley, I pulled this one out for you. Yeah, I've oh, been seeing you it. You're just like waving that in my face. Stop hey, it. I'll wait for a minute. <clears throat> Here. Well, that's the- if anybody gets out, out of out of hand, I will whack them with my spider spatula. Yeah, there you go. And that's just makes you want some pancakes. Wait. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, Ash- <laughs> Ashley's up next with the review, and she won for pancakes. I was moving on to issue number eight. Are you back? Yes. There you go. Oh, okay. well done. So she has to wear. Ashley <laughs> is going to review issue number eight. You uh, written by Ashley. You what? You expect me to follow up JR's act? I can't do that. Yeah, you you do. Matteo Buffagani. Maybe that's how you say it. I have another way to All say right. it. All right. Take, take me through it, Ashley. So we got the usual team that Brad can't pronounce. Buffagani, <laughs> Fagdine. And he uh, reads for a living. Your guess is as good as mine. But, um, so we open up, we're seeing... I don't think JR mentioned this in the last review, but what, they had some, like, policemen go after... They tried to go after Mr. Negative, but he attacked them all with drugs, and they all were afflicted. And so they're just all in the, ho- in the hospital now, recovering, and uh, Spider-Man and Dr. Wu have just worked on developing the antidote to yeah. uh, to combat the effects. Um, meanwhile, back at Parker Industries, we have uh, the old bald guy, as JR put it, seeing how he's being awarded the Humanitarian of the Year Award. And as Peter is handing him the trophy, Mr. Negative's kind of watching him, waiting for him to follow through on the directive he was given in the other issue to, you know, slip him the drug and make him confess his sins before everyone. But Peter, of course, has been immune to the effects of the shade this whole time. So, of course, nothing happens and Mr. Negative's plans are foiled. However, the ruse is up and Mr. Negative puts, like, he just, like, has everyone go out there. Sin Cloak teleports them all Actually, literally saying, it's a trap, which of course, you know, Spidey has to remind us that that meme is still alive and kicking and actually makes an Admiral Ackbar reference. Like, I'm not kidding. Well, yeah, it is, yeah. well, Disney, well, Marvel is owned by Disney, which owns Star Wars, so. Exactly. So they have, I guess they just have, it's in the contract, I guess. You have to make a reference to Star Wars. It's the low hanging um, fruit. It really is. And honestly, like, with our Miley Cyrus reference, the, couple, the last issue I reviewed, I'm like, like it's like instead of being actually funny now, Spider Man is just resorting to referential humor and memes, which you oh know tells God. you where Slot spends most of his time. Oh no! Oh, oh so words. in the ensuing fight, Ching Hao actually gets shot in the crossfire, but the police are actually able to get to him and protect him and keep him from keep him out of harm's way, and they actually get to shoot the guys full of their little antidote darts and get them, you know, healed up. But of course, Red is body is actually, he actually states, oh, for for once, everything's going according to plan, so you know what's going to happen. And then, um, Little Miss Lien comes through in the Spider-Mobile and crashes that party. Let's see. Then further up the building, we have, I'm trying to remember, I guess, in the last book, Cloak was he opened Evil. the effects of the drug. Yeah, he yeah, was reversed. Uh, he managed to figure out how Photoshop works and reverse the negative tone on Dagger. So she... <laughs> <laughs> now he gives her the antidote, and she's all back to herself as well. Uh, Mister Negative manages to slip through and applies drug to Ching Hao, who just sits up, confesses all of his crimes, says what a horrible person he is. And then Mr. Negative tells him to jump out the window, and he just jumps right to it. But fortunately... After seeing Jessica Jones, it reminds me of the Purple Man. A bit, yeah. It's very similar. But uh, Spider-Man just happened to be not only, like, right outside the window, but he was actually jumping out the right side of the building. So I'm like, that was very, you know, fortunate. Yes. And um, Lynn, like, somehow reflexively grabs him. Right as he's falling by, she grabs him in the spider mobile. It's like actually like she's trying to prove that she's some kind of morally gray character. So, oh no, she's the bad guy, and but oh no, she wants to save him. I don't care. And um, <laughs> but unfortunately, 
reaching out to catch him somehow causes her to lose her footing on the building. You know, the Spider-Mobile, which you've seen multiple times, like, it's big features to run down the side of a building. But because she yeah. angled 30 degrees to the, you know, on the X-axis, she suddenly loses her footing and goes tumbling down. I'm like, okay, you know, how many times have we been reminded how high-tech and sophisticated and, oh, you know, she's the sharpest mind and she, this is the culmination of her efforts. Yeah, way to go, Leanne. When they plummet to the ground, Spider-Man tries and fails to catch them. But don't worry, Cloak and Dagger are there to completely alleviate any tension and use their powers to lower them to safety. And, and uh, help our hero in his solo book. Right? Yeah. No, honestly, like, I, I'm like, there are higher stakes than the last Pokemon movie that I watched. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking about, like, one of the old ones, like, where it was actually kind of semi-decent. Like, this is, like, the most recent one, where it's just like, why am I watching this? But so in the aftermath, uh, Spider-Man coaches Leanne, telling her, oh, it's okay, you're still a good person, you're doing it for the right reasons, everything's peachy keen, you know, Parker Industries is going to help you out, and get your mother all better. And I'm just thinking, yeah. why didn't they do this in the first place, you know? It's like, okay, Leanne's working for, like, you know, the most, like, the most technologically advanced and most, um, like, philanthropic company in the world yeah. right now. They're known for, for really providing for um, for their consumer base uh, on a global scale. And, like, you think, you know, the employees would get some pretty good benefits as well. So, and especially since she's dating the CEO, you know, you think he yeah. could say, like, hey, hey, you know, my mom's been in the hospital with this, like, incurable condition. You think he could, like, you know, help me out? Hook a sister up. Which yeah. is, and the, the mother, I'll remind you, he's actually referring, he actually, he himself calls mom. So I'm like, that implies there's kind of like a close relationship there. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's like, what the heck? So so if you tried to kill your boss, I guess it would be okay at Parker Industries. Apparently, that's the message that is coming yeah, across. Yeah, but if your name is Shajani Joffrey, tough luck. Yeah. <laughs> we can't... Uh, I mean, after 20 issues. <laughs> yeah. So maybe 20 issues later, we'll see, you know, after she's like burned Parker Industries to the ground. <laughs> but, but with good intentions, with her heart in the right place, maybe then Leon will, you know, be shown the door. Right. Man. But with she'll still get a good recommendation. She'll be like, a, yeah, with yeah, good she, you know, yeah. And everything. Yeah. Peter she's Parker's reference. Peter Parker's reference is like, yeah, this woman's tried to kill me. She's going to be do a great job for your company, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking dedicated to the cause. Absolutely. That's a hell of a recommendation on the cover letter or on the resume. <laughs> it really it. puts her yeah. heart into it. Absolutely. Man. So my, yeah. so I dated her and she tried to kill me, but she's really well qualified for this new position that I'm, she's trying to apply. And she for. can type really fast. She yeah, can make a giant spider car that can go up and down a building, but only she's, if it's facing exactly, she, if it's perfectly perpendicular to the ground. She's well organized, knows how to set goals, tries to kill me. Hey, <laughs> perfect for the corporate world. She got a freaking bad. <laughs> I guess, actually, that's, is that pretty much the summation? Pretty much. Just we end okay. with a menacing yeah. and conveniently timed recording from Lee. Like, literally, they, the, everyone's out of this room, then everyone walks back into this room, and boom, the recording comes up. I'm like, okay, sure. He asks us that from he, now on, he has joined forces with Mr. Negative, and, you know, he's teamed up with his alter ego to reclaim Shanghai. Yeah. And cue the Cloak uh, <sighs> and Dagger upcoming series with that final page yeah. and everything like oh. this. Yeah. yeah I guess that's, so. Yeah, it's pretty much, that's yeah. pretty much what they're setting up. Is like they're So, gonna... Ashley, what would you give this one for a grade? D. A D, okay. Uh, Mike, what would you give for a grade? I'm giving it a D, too. Okay, JR? I give it a D, Brad! <laughs> <laughs> back, back. Uh, Zach, what would you give it for a grade? Mayday gives it an F. An F. Ooh. An F. All right, I'm going to give it a D minus. I care so little what happened in this book. Mm -hmm. And Zach and I were actually talking about this. I prefer the Clone Saga to this. And I cried ah. tears of joy. <laughs> is, it, is it sacrilege, JR? Did you like the Clone Saga better than this? Boy, that's uh, <laughs> it, what, what, what did what did uh, what didn't Mr. Cushing once use the analogy of saying the time I broke my hand was better than the time I got run over by a car or something like that? 
<laughs> you know, uh, it, but they're both they were both different kinds of awful. They're both different kinds of awful. But you felt something was at stake in the Clone Saga. Um, you know, it's kind of like Ashley said, you know, there was more at stake in the last Pokemon movie. She, I mean, the thing is, we should, you know, once this this revelation about Ms. Tang, I mean, should have meant something, mm -hmm. you know. But it doesn't. I mean, you're sitting there, you know, you're you're watching Spy, you know, seeing, looking Spider Man, saying, "Oh, it's all right," you know. And it's like, are you a dope? You know, are yeah. you an idiot? I mean, see, because we've had no, we've had no in investment. We've had no investment in their relationship, no investment in her as a Peter relationship, no investment in her as a person. So we didn't care that she turned out to be the bad guy. She didn't, or don't even know her. Yeah, and, and you know, and and you know. We don't understand why Peter or Spider-Man is cutting her some slack because we don't know her, we don't understand her, and we have no insight into their relationship. So it's utterly meaningless. And and I remember when you and I were texting, Brad, uh, about, yeah. uh, you know, when you asked me uh, if I could do it on Friday or whatever and blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, I've had Amazing Spider-Man 8 sitting in my briefcase for a week. And I haven't read. I wasn't interested. I didn't care. I mean, really, I had no interest really in p in picking it up. So um, I actually found uh, somebody actually, I think, on their on the message boards, uh, actually posted a quote from a Tumblr page, which I think sums up the whole thing between Peter and Leanne quite nicely, actually, um, which I can actually reread verbatim, where she's basically okay. She uh, from um, I think called any good story should Tumblr or something. So she's talking about she's basically quoting quoting like what kind of what peter would basically saying oh hey like you're only my girlfriend and this is the very first time i've heard your mother have health issues and instead of confiding in your boyfriend who runs a major major super duper international tech corporate conglomerate that specializes in whipping up fantasy tech and drugs and in an eye blink and we're working on cancer drugs as shown in the last issue you instead somehow got in touch with a major international crime lord that all of shield can't track down but how who ships you experimental drugs that you willingly gave to your mother even though hello international crime lord and god knows who tested them or any or if they were tested and then you betray your boyfriend and his company in return for the experimental drugs with no pro provenance but you know it was your mom so like i hope i forgive you and trust you can you, to help help me even though this seals us both as as blank and internet in, 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 irrational numbskulls so but because that whole thing i mean it's just like you can kind of understand that Peter Parker is a forgiving individual, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it just, I mean, you're talking, you're, you're talking, it's, it's just one of these things where you don't really have any kind of, like JR said, there's no emotional investment. It just, you're kind of expected to know, you're supposed to expected to care about this, but well, newsflash, Dance Lot and Marvel, just because it says amazing Spider-Man on the cover and it has Spider-Man in it, doesn't automatic and doesn't and he cares about certain things doesn't mean the audience doesn't mean the readership will you've got to actually establish this stuff first you've got to be able to give us a reason beforehand to try to set up why we should have why we should emphasize with these characters you just can't just say oh well they're because he establishes right away they're dating and therefore oh we're supposed to think betray that she oh it's a shocking betrayal that and all this stuff and oh look you know but None of that happens because we don't really – because we're coming right in the middle of this thing, just like we're coming in the middle of how he became so successful with Par at Parker Industries and why he's got offices all over the world. It just – because you know, you just needed – he just never bothered to set up – you know, kind of build upon this stuff, you know, but it is at all. So It's just uh, the lowest I've seen the book, and I, I, I like J.R., have been reading this for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I, I cannot stand this run. Mm -hmm. uh, I like Superior. I liked Renew Your Vows. Renew Your Vows was the last good story that I read from Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And this thing is just atrocious. Just atrocious. Right, so, it's not the character that I love. So I, I'm going to ask the old men in, a, in the room. Is yeah, it better? A... Dot, dot, dot. Is it better than the Clone Saga? No. It's worse. I like Clone Saga. Better. JR? Well, in a relative sort of way, like I said before, the clone saga had more at stake. You were more interested yeah. in what was going to happen, and uh, you're and see, you don't care here. You care what was going to happen in the clone saga. You don't care here. Is it we're... better than the Denny O'Neill <laughs> run? Ooh. Wow. 
No. 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 It's and, not any worse and, though either. So. And 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 finally, is it better than the Mackie Burn reboot? Well, no. technically, this run is kind of a revamp of the Mackie Burn reboot. Actually, if you think about it, <laughs> because yeah, I, for I like a company, or you know, better. it just a lot. It just that the whole idea of working for a tech firm is much longer. But oh, the Mackie Burn reboot though was a middle finger. So I always, you know, to the fans. So I always consider that pretty well the uh, the bottom of the barrel because I really felt that was that was done very cynically. Uh, I mean, I don't know that this is being done cynically. It's just. <laughs> Yeah. I, 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 I. Well, maybe if Slot wasn't Rip. wasn't busy uh, banning Crawl Space off his Twitter, then um, <laughs> then um, to actually sit down and write the books and write something that's really enjoyable for all, we we might be having a different conversation. All right, we're gonna do around the web reviews. All right, our friends over at uh, Superior Spider Talk gave issue number seven a six point five, and uh, in grade school that was an F, right? Well, it's more like a D minus, generally. Sixty percent. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That, that's uh, 50, 50 that's sixty-five percent. That's a D. Fifty would be F range. Is was basically. Got it. Yeah. Uh, they said the book is okay. It lacks any low lows, but also doesn't warrant any high highs. Instead, this is a series that appears to be perfectly content in being average in every way, biding time until the next big event that is certain to polarize readers. Over on CBR, they gave it four out of five stars. Of course they do. That would be a that would be a B. <laughs> Uh, let's see. But our ad revenue will go down if we give it a three out of five stars. <laughs> Slot, slots text. This is a quote from CBR uh, on issue number seven. Slots textured storyline and Bafagani's execution of it make Amazing Spider-Man a typical example of how strong this series has been to date. While its twists make it stand apart from the issues that preceded it, the notion of globalized Spider-Man and CEO Peter Parker might have seemed preposterous, preposterous six months ago, but it seems all too natural now. That's from CBR. Really? Uh, Go home, over on top... CBR, you're drunk. Uh, no, I've sure never been to this it, website, but it pulled up on the reviews. Comic Ocity uh, reviewed the book. Let's see if they have a grade. They gave this one a 9 out of 10. Wow. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 7 is a fun read that shows how to do mid-arc issues right. Uh, Slot delivers an entertaining chapter in which has been a very solid series thus far. Over at Majorspoilers.com on issue number seven, they let's see, they give it. Oh, let's see. That looks like one, two, three, four. That's four and a half. Or actually, three and a half stars on the writing. Um, Out of. Out of five. Oh, yeah, they break it down by... The bottom line, a lot of going on here. This issue features a lot of dialogue and character interaction, but most of all, it works to advance the ongoing plot. What? And there are only one or two places where the back and forth slows things down too much. As part of part two of an ongoing, the sheer amount of continuity is understandable and handled well, but still feels a little bit daunting for me as a reader to return to the fold. <laughs> Amazing 7 is a solid issue, a good second chapter in an arc that has a lot of potential featuring nice art and... Uh, cool visuals, three and a half out of five is what they gave it. Okay. Now, now you know, I did not to interrupt. Or, well, yeah, of course yeah. I deliberately interrupted. You know, I can appreciate the fact that some people have a different opinion than myself, you know, wrong as it may be. But, I mean, it's just the glowing praise. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we gave it, we gave, we pretty well gave it a D, D minus or whatever. I mean, I can see upper C's, lower B, something like this. But, I mean, th these are effusive reviews, and I am yeah. just completely befuddled, yeah. frankly. All right, over on uh, issue number eight, this is from CBR, and they gave that it also a four out of five. Uh, let's read the summation at the bottom. S amazing eight is amazingly fun. Slot and Bafagani wrap up the Dark Kingdom in a satisfying way, taking some elements from the first story arc, but not relying too heavily on them in order to get this three-parter off the ground. Thanks to a fun story, handsome art, and some good colors, we've got a winner. Spider-Man should be presented one of Marvel's marquee characters in Amazing Spider-Man. Number eight does just that. That's from CVR, CBR. Over on IGN, let's see what they give this one. I know what they did. <laughs> let's see. This issue is okay. It says, it offers a visually stunning but dramatically lacking conclusion. <laughs> nice, Mike. How is that? Dramatically lacking conclusion to the current storyline. Uh, the pros, snazzy action sequences. The cons, conflict lacks urgency, lacks 
lack of closure for Mr. Negative, and dim coloring. He didn't like the dim mm -hmm. coloring. Uh, Amazing 8 is the first real disappointment in the new volume. This issue looks great thanks to Mr. Bafagani's dynamic action scenes, but the conflict fizzles out and fails to provide much closer, closure for Mr. Negative. They give it a 6.2, so that's a D, kind of like what we did. Yep. Our friends over at Superior Spider Talk, let's look what their grade is. They give this one a C, a 7 out of out of 10, it looks like. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. say it's good. Amazing 8 is a textbook example of no fuss, no muss, Superhero comic storytelling, it brings the Dark Forces arc to a satisfying conclusion while also setting up the next arc in a straightforward fashion. Over on a little website we call Spider-Man Crawl Space. Uh, that website's <laughs> negative. They hate me. I know. <laughs> Our buddy Neil, let's see what Neil gave it. He gave it a... an F. There you go, Neil. <laughs> Represent. Represent. There you go, Neil. Let's... Neil liked it worse, hated it worse than we did. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, let's see what uh, Mark gave uh, Amazing 8. I can read the uh, his grade if my website will pull it up. There it goes. Mark gave it a C+. Plus. He, he liked it a little bit better. He's, uh, that looks like all around the web. What, do you get, what reactions to all those varying reviews? There's a lot that lined up with us, but there's a lot over the top giving it an A, I think. Well, uh, they're, they're, every once in a while, it's okay to be wrong. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, no, I really am kidding. Look, yeah. I, yeah. I, I know that there is a certain segment of fandom out, out there right now that thinks, this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. But as a longtime reader of Spider-Man, I have read Spider-Man now for, I am 28 years old, so I've read him for 22 years. Yeah. I have read the history. I'm a Clone Saga apologist, okay? <laughs> one of the supposedly worst storylines in the history of Spider-Man. Not anymore, baby. <laughs> but this, to me, is... And we've talked about this several times. This is so off-base that we have a... There's a sadness when we're reading these books. And, I, and I'm not going to lie, and I, I hate to bring this up, but there's also a, an enjoyment factor that's lessened by the fact that we have a guy in Dan Slott who has a mat on for the Spider-Man crawl space. And as somebody that's been around the, the site for a long time, it's very disconcerting to be reading his material for so long. For so long. We've read it now for eight years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when, you, when I was sitting there thinking about, uh, cause this year is our 10th anniversary and of, of the podcast, yeah. of the podcast. And when we started, we were all like, yeah, Dan slot. I mean, I, I could pull up audio clips of, of Jr you know, singing the praises of Dan Slott. Mm -hmm. and if you ever run for president, J.R., we've got audio. <laughs> uh, we can, hey, we trust can... me, if Donald Trump is going to win the Republican nomination, <laughs> I'm, you know, none of that's going to come back to me. Trust me. Here, here's another thing I wanted to do before we get to satellites real quick, because we're hitting almost the hour mark. Uh, over at Comics Beat, they do a monthly sales list. Yeah. And uh, one thing I thought was interesting, this volume is declining at a rapid pace. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man Volume Four Number One sold for two hundred sold two hundred forty-five thousand copies to the direct market. Issue Number Two sold one hundred eleven thousand copies. That's a fifty-four percent drop. Uh, issue Three sold ninety-three. Issue Four sold eighty-two. Issue Five sold seventy-nine, and the latest, which is eight, seven, uh, issue Number Six, sold seventy-six. Uh, since issue number two, there's been a 31% drop in a retailers ordering Amazing Spider-Man. It was the number eleven. It was in the top. It was in the top 20. Mm -hmm. It came in at number 11. So that uh, to compare it, um, Amazing Volume Three, number 18, which came out in May of 2015, it sold 88,000 copies. Mm -hmm. uh, April. Uh, of 15, Amazing Volume 3, number 17, sold 99,000 copies. So there, there's a there's a big discrepancy in uh, this volume. To, what do you guys think of those numbers? To, to play devil's advocate, though, we also yeah. probably need to check, and it's kind of difficult to do when we're trying to do a live video podcast, but 
we also probably need to check and see if there's if there's a bunch of variant covers because you've got um, the retailer variants that are obviously number one had a ton of yes. yeah yeah it did yeah um, but the fact is it sold a half a million copies volume three did because it was the first story after Superior and I think everybody was like ready to see Peter come back and, yeah. and then this one sold what two hundred sixty five thousand copies still very great great in terms of in terms of the the orders made. But how many of those books are actually selling, and how many are sitting? These are, these are orders. Yeah, these yeah. are the orders, and and we don't so, we don't have the sales numbers yeah. um, right. in front of us. And, and if you talk to remember, remember during the Wacker Slot Wars, um, sounds like the Clone Wars and Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, yeah, the, the Wacker Slot Wars of the Crawl Space, uh, circa two thousand eight, nine, and ten. Um, uh, Wacker always seemed to think that it was like. Uh, I refudiate the numbers. I refudiate the numbers. But they, but they always go to the numbers when it's it's in their favor. Oh, absolutely. I remember when when um, direct sales. Yeah. I remember when Brand New Day came out, and I did an analysis of um, when there was four books during the '90s, and it was outselling the first Brand New Day month outsold the combined four uh, the uh, amazing and the three satellite books combined. It outsold that in their first brand new day month. And I remember Dan Slott saying, well, according to your numbers, this is great. Woo yeah. Well, you got to remember too. I mean, cause it was not just with amazing Spider-Man, but with all the, um, all the Marvel books that have been relaunched under the all new, all different banner, they all started off. Okay. Pretty, very strong. And then now they've kind of settled down to situations where they're either at or below where they were originally selling prior to before, you know, secret wars, arbitrarily decided to cancel them for the event and then relaunch them because all the title, uh, most of the titles, like for instance, if you look at say something like all the female centric spider, spider titles like uh, spider Gwen and spider woman and silk, they've all gone. They've all been hit by this, you know, by this, by this as well. Speaking of spider satellites, yep. we're going to get to them right now. Yep. Uh, we're spending two minutes, if not less on each title. So, uh, Zach, let's hit you up. You've got what's going on in uh, Miles Morales, Spider Man. So we have Blackheart showing up um, in Miles Morales because because you demanded it. You mean the Ghost Rider villain? The Ghost Rider villain Blackheart shows up. Son and of he, Mephisto. Don't Son of Mephisto shows oh, up no. and like completely like kicks the Avengers' ass. Okay. Not quite prison ass, but the Avengers' ass. And so Miles, like, Miles is literally the only one left standing. We also get the um, – we established that Gronky and everybody that was in his uh, – supporting characters that were in his title before Secret Wars are in the um, Miles Morales book. So we get some time at the high school. And, yeah. and then um, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, you know, starts beating on Blackhawk and actually beats Blackhawk at one point. You mean is this Black issue Heart? number two? This is number one. Issue, uh, number one, okay. Okay, we're at number one. And at the end of the issue, uh, Peter Parker sh shows up as as Spider-Man with his glowing eyes and all, <laughs> asking, what did you do? Yeah. And um, that's the end of issue one. So we have... What, what about number two? What's going on in issue number two? And then we got an issue number two, which uh, picks up right at where issue one left off. And Peter and, and Miles have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Now... In this book, they've established that um, with the dialogue that Miles doesn't know Peter's identity. Really? Really? Oh, yeah. So the events of Spider-Man. That sense at all? Uh, to me, it seemed like that he's like, oh, remember that like they didn't call each other Peter and stuff, Peter and Miles, like during the dialogue. So when you look at the dialogue, you're like, hey, shouldn't these guys be kind of sitting there saying, I gave you my blessing? Now during the um, <laughs> during the uh, uh, during the book, there's actually these cutscenes that are reminiscent of the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. So, because you demanded it, <laughs> nice, 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 Brad. Um, we have um, uh, we have those little cutscenes, and and of course, we're basically Peter gives his blessing because Blackheart shows back up and he uses his Venom Sting to take Blackheart out. Uh, and a mailbox. So don't so basically, basically, is it is it a do you li are you liking the Miles book? I am because uh, look, Sarah Pacelli is great. Um, I think that um, the it picks up right where right where the previous volume left off. 
I actually think it's the strongest Spider-Man book on the market right now. And Any, anything, anything upsetting you? <laughs> no, other than that, other than the, the the bobblehead like making a really awkward noise. Well, well, the thing is though, Zach, don't think because there's a point though that I think an issue too where there's a reference towards Spider-Man, which was also the Bendis uh, series. Yeah, like, and I. I and we may get more of this because apparently this so is this is, this is a um a con- like this is the s- indirect sequel of Spider Man. Yeah. So, uh, so if Spider Man did this to Miles, he wouldn't know who that is. <laughs> hey, uh, who bought that? You got that. You got that for me, by the way, from San Diego. <laughs> yeah, I bought that in San Diego, actually. Yeah. yeah. Who, who are you? I have no idea. <laughs> well, who are well, you? Well, remember the mind wipe's supposed to work that way. Like if he takes off. That's true. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So you don't see it. Yeah, there's no face. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, general grade for the book at the moment. I'm going to give it a B. Okay. You've also got uh, All New Avengers real quick. What's the latest issue that you've read? Uh, what would you, what's going I on in All New I was skimming through these, and I'm going to try to keep this mile-centric because, quite frankly, the rest of the Avengers I really can give two damn shits about. Amen. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give it a C. The artwork's pretty good. But other than that, in fact, I'm going to give you visual aids and say I'm going to give this. Oh, a can't see a thing. Oh, yeah. This, hey. I give this. There you go. So he's copying your stuff, JR. Yeah, yeah, I have to. I have to. Um, uh, what is it? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery there, Mr. JR. What, what's going on with New Avengers that you don't like or, or you do like? Um, what's working? Really, to me, it's kind of boring. It's not a, it's not a I'm a little lost. There's some. Uh, it's taken a couple of issues for everybody to show up. You got Iron Man, like the Vision doesn't show up till issue three, issue two. Um, the the Jane Foster Thor shows up in issue two, so it's taking a little while for these. Um, and and I may actually be reading the wrong volume. In fact, I think I no no I'm not. Uh, <laughs> because it says num- uh, issue two number fifteen. Who knows? There's like fifteen issue fours in the last four years. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, other other than that, I mean, it's not it's not a terrible series, but it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not over the moon. Yeah, I'm not yeah. I'm not over the moon. Right? It's, it's it's. You're also reading Web Warriors. Web Warriors what, is. What's a grade for that one? It's kind of hard for me to grade Web Warriors because I want to like this book, I really do. Um, Web Warriors picks up where Spider Verse left off. You got the you got Captain Britain. You got uh, Spider Man India. You got um, you got Mayday in her in her throw up, mashed together her father's costume and Ben Riley's costume shtick. Uh, you got Spider Gwen. Um, we've got a bunch of Electros running around and they're causing havoc. Supposedly, issue five is going to be the game changer. Um, and if you want to see your favorite Spider Man, um, in Web Warriors start writing in now. So if you want to see more Mayday, say hi. Hey, we want more Mayday. Uh, is it a good book? I mean, what would your grade be for that? Book? I, I'm going to give it overall. It's a it's a C plus. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the last one you've got is Iron Man featuring Mary Jane. What would you give that book for a grade? I will tell you right now, this is some really good Mary Jane characterization. Mm-hmm. I actually that whole book I think is good, even without the Mary yeah, Jane. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. Invincible Iron Man is probably the best book on the stands right now. Uh, I wouldn't disagree with you on that. Actually, I, it's really good. Uh, I think Bendis is he know he he can write Tony well. I, I like Friday the um, the AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, she's Shit, sassy yeah. and she she really is a good foil for Tony. Um, the Madam Mask, Victor Von Doom without his scars is an interesting subplot. Yeah. Um, so basically, the, the Iron Man broken. Mary Jane opened. What was it called? Jackpots? Yeah, it was, called, was, Jackpot. it called? It was called Jackpot. It was her club in she, Chicago. She moved to Chicago. Mm-hmm. She opened Jackpots. Iron Man crashes through, destroys it. She says, I'm moving out of New York because there's too many heroes. The opening night, they level her uh, her club. And Tony says, you know what? I'll, I'll pay this. You want to come work for me? That's how Mary Jane is in the yep. Iron Man universe. And, so, uh, the- I like it. The latest issue uh, that she came out this the week that we're recording this um, has Mary Jane actually in her job interview, and she gives she gives Tony his um, uh, Peter Parker's emergency number, which just blows my mind <laughs> yeah. that we have an emergency <laughs> number for a guy that couldn't could barely pay his water bill, you know, five years ago. 
the amazing thing is that she still has it, even though she says we haven't spoken. I don't. We don't talk to each other anymore. Yeah, and, and we haven't spoken since volume, volume three. three. <laughs> we haven't spoken. <laughs> no, they haven't spoken since the Superior Spider-Man number thirty-one. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, was that volume two? No, that, oh hell, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, who was, so that was before volume three. That was right before volume three. Right. So, so Iron Man gets an A out of you. I'm gonna give probably. it an A. Marquez. Yeah, I, out of me too. David Marquez. Mm-hmm. Is, I loved him on on Ultimate Spider Man. He was a revelation. He is awesome on um, Invincible Iron Man. So mm-hmm. A out of me. Very much love this book. All right, Ashley, you've got a bunch of uh, books also. Spider Gwen, what what would you give the book at the moment? You think? Um, at the moment, it starts off pretty slow. It's going for a more um. I guess in a more emotional development, it's digging a little deeper than the original series did. We're kind of getting into, um, I'm liking it better. Yeah. It's definitely more interesting. It's digging deeper into the, um, the, the root the world. of Peter yeah, Parker yeah. and what happened with him and how Gwen is handling it, how she's coping with it. And we've kind of returned to it various times just to get people up to speed. Essentially, um, what starts this off with the kickoff is, um, if you recall, during her origin, Peter Parker became the lizard because he wanted to to emulate Spider Woman, his idol, and be just like her. And so he he, I think with um Doctor Con- Doctor Connor's help, who is their science teacher at the high school, he uses his work to create his own version of the lizard formula. Takes it, goes berserk, and ends up um dying, ultimately dying because of it. And Gwen blames herself. For his death, and that's her, like, Peter's kind of her Uncle Ben. But in the new series, The Radioactive Spider-Gwen, um, there's been a resurgence of lizard copycats that have been spotted, sighted around the sewers and whatnot. And so, of course, this uh, Gwen's trying to get to the bottom of it, and also trying to cope with her own, um, her own sense of guilt and her involvement with Peter's death, like, dealing with, um, the loss so it was kind of a slow build up because most of what we're getting was the drama between her and her father that was left over from the original series. There's some band drama, but what are, I think it really started picking up speed and like hitting really hard was when Harry Osborne got brought back into it. And they've actually, um, brought some goblins in. Yeah. Yes. What I've really liked about this series is like, they go and give like, it's kind of, it's not really a, it's not a reboot. That's not what I'm trying to say. And, Another volume, if anything. I don't know. <laughs> know. It's like it takes all the other Marvel ca- other Marvel characters and revamps their background story, which we've like seen Captain before. America. That's nothing new. But the way this series goes about it, it's just it's so creative, and it's just it's not like it's like trying so hard to be different. It actually is like it's something you wouldn't normally expect from that character. And at the end, instead of a letter, I don't know if they still have a letters page in that, but they have like an old school type. Marvel Universe uh, uh, listing. Like a, bi- a bio, this, basically. A bio. Yeah, uh, yeah like they the were doing Marvel that. Bio. They give a little so more was... info. I know they did it for, um, they did it for the Captain yeah, America. Captain America. Captain America. Yeah. yeah. But no. So what was, what was your grade for Spider-Gwen, you think? For Spider-Gwen, I would say it's an A-. minus. A-. minus. How about Silk? What would your grade be for Silk at the moment? Silk? I would give it a, a B plus. We start out with Cindy. She's, um, you know, obviously the big pull for this one is that, oh, she's working for Black Cat now. Which she isn't. She's working for. She's she's a double double agent. So she's pretending to be a bad guy, working for Black Cat, pretending, you know, but all but secretly selling that information back to the Avengers. Who um, Mockingbird is her. Um, her the Mockingbird's in like a, in a bunch of spider titles. It seems. Yeah, but they're mostly investigating. Um, I guess where the last where the end of the series, the first series, picked um, left off with her finding her brother who had been. Um, inducted into the Goblin Nation, so she's investigating kind of the um what's going on with the Goblin Underground right now, which is kind of yeah. weird. Like honestly, the more I see of the Goblin Nation, the less I like it because I'm getting like this weird Peter Pan and the Lost Boys vibe from it. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> well, it is led, it's led, so well, it's led by Phil. It is led by uh, Phil Urich. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, and at least they're actually doing something with this particular subplot instead of letting it fester. Right. True, I mean, literally. But like, Jr., are you going to pick up silk because there's goblins? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say what's making it pretty good right now is, um, strangely, we're seeing silk 
I mean, she's getting her way, and she's kind of settling into Peter's original role. She's the one who's, you know, she's got this tiny little place um, that she's trying to keep up with. Like, she's got her own apartment and everything. She's trying to, well, she just completed her her GED, and she's got this internship, and she's just trying to kind of keep her head afloat while she's swimming through all this other stuff, which is really reminiscent of Peter's old situation, just with the distinct difference that, she's mostly sad like she's mostly content with what she has because she started out with so little so we don't really see a lot of her trying to scrape by and i think most of the conflicts she deals with are more internal and dealing with her like her finding her place in this new world that's the main you're you're like me you're probably surprised that this book is this good yeah except though i noticed a lot of it for me has to do with the art and issues three and four when they changed the artist and it kind of was crap um yeah I was much less invested because I'm like, I like the art just goes with it so well. It really just like hooks you in and like endears you to these characters. And also like Black Cat is on point. Like I know everyone's complaining about like, this isn't like what her role should be. This isn't who she is. Um, Like she'd never be, you know, trying to be Kingpin. It's so out of character for her, which, you know, I agree. But for me, the draw of Black Cat has never been what she is. It's who she is. So she's not really in the right, in the proper role. But, like, she's doing it exactly as Felicia would. She's owning it, like, every second of it. So, I'm eating it up. Spider-Woman is your last one. Um, Jess has Are you had, liking that? Up to date, um, yeah, up to this point, Jess has had the baby, and we still don't know who the father is, which I feel like is the only... What, no is she, what issue are we on at this point? Four or five. Okay. But, yeah. So, it's... is there is there is Maury Povich going to make an appearance on, in Spider-Woman? <laughs> JR, you are not the father of Jessica Drew's baby. Well, apparently, I'm the only one who hasn't been given as a suspect, so. <laughs> and neither am I. They're getting back into the scrolls, and she's at this interdimensional hospital in this that's located in the black hole. Is it, and is it, honestly, the, is it the same hospital in uh, Star that was uh, Star Wars? Where they have like the little metal thing where in Episode Three. Oh fuck. no, no! It's it's really weird. It's basically Die Hard in Outer Space Hospital, basically. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good summation. Yeah. Kind of, except with you know, really weird visuals. Like, oh my god! Like, yippee yip, ki yay, push! Yippee ki push! <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, there's there's not much going on. I feel like there's really. What's your grade for the book? You First, think? I don't want to just maybe like a C. It's yeah. not. It's just. It's. It's not bad, but it's just not going anywhere. And there's, like, I think Jessica Drew's a really great character, and it's fun to see, like, how she handles things. But she's just not given anything really good to work with. And she just, in spite of, like... It's something we've never seen a pregnant superhero before. At least I haven't. Yeah, but even with something like that, and they kind of introduce how it's, like, she's really a fish out of water. She never really wanted to have kids. This isn't a position she wanted to be in. Because they're trying so hard to, like, keep it a secret like how everything happened the there's really no moments where we can see inside her head or like see her deal with this issue like for such a personal event that's happening to her all the conflict is external we don't see any internal conflict at all so it's just kind of disappointing and as as the person that's had a baby most recently um you conceived a baby yeah can see uh, <laughs> yeah i caught i caught the kid i caught the cord i caught the kid <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, because if you actually had the baby, that would be like, oh my gosh, did you, know, you have a movie? You have this, a movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, actually, well, yeah. well, well, that and and, and, and nobody wants to see and, that. And Bar- if Barryman was here, he'd be like, well, this just completely proves everybody's theory that you know Zach's a woman. Mm. Um, love you, George. Uh, but <sighs> there is conflict in in pregnancy. There's conflict in. The, the internal feelings and the, the nervousness and all of that from whoever, whoever the father is. I love how Brad's throwing action figures at us. Ooh, there's the black cat again. Um, I just... Hi, the daddy? <laughs> Brains. 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 <laughs> I can do that too, Doug. All right. I can do that too, Doug. Oh, you're, you're... That's a 12-inch Venom, isn't it? <laughs> ah! <laughs> My God. Okay. Anyway, but um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's I think it's cool that we have a pregnant superhero, but I'd like to see more. I'd like to see what more's going on. Yeah. See, so something actually done with it. Let's see, Mike. You've got the point issues. Uh, 
We're starting. I think we're, we're up to we're, point three, are we? We're starting with those. Okay. Um, we're setting the bar really low. Just, yeah. Like, what's the story about, man? Okay. Well, apparently in this. Um, okay. This essentially starts off. Essentially, Spire. The Peter Parker is looking into um, the death and resurrection of a of an ordinary man from Harlem. So basically, it's uh, every other Wednesday in the Marvel Universe, um, because and. They no one can really explain how this guy was able to come back from the dead, and yeah. so he also gets and apparently also involved in this are what are the uh, Santarians, which are a group of Latino superheroes, which were created by Joe Quesada from uh, in the I, miniseries Daredevil Father, and they're yeah. basically they are named after uh, what's called um, in the Santeria religion Oratius, um, which are also kind of synonymous with saints and. Roman Catholicism, and there's and they and so. I wonder if they've ever appeared anywhere else besides that. Father I think ministry. that Daryl Father was it. That was the only time they appeared. And there's a whole thing with, um, and so Peter at one point has to go to Cuba, um, to kind of investigate the thing. And we learn about hey, guess what? Communist dictatorships runs by you know the Castro brothers absolutely sucks. So news at eleven. But um, and also apparently in this series. Um, it turns out that Peter Parker was bitten by a radioactive Richard Dawkins because um, he does not – because apparently he does not believe um, – he does not buy any of this supernatural, miracle, whatever – you know, any kind of – he says there's – because he's all – but he's all a believer in science, you know. Never mind that he, of course, lives in a universe, um, albeit a comic book one, in which it was – it's a pro- – in which uh, God, demons – Ghost magic actually are proven to exist, and he's powerful. And the devil. Hell, oh, yes. <laughs> but don't he's, the you know, how, about, how about this? How about one point three? What that's happened in that? Leading, that's actually what I'm le- that, 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 okay. because the thing is apparently with issue one point with issue one point three. Oh yeah, he met Uncle Ben, or somebody okay. who claimed to be Uncle Ben, the ghost of Uncle Ben. Which of course Spider Man doesn't believe <laughs> as Uncle Ben, even though he's already met <laughs> Uncle Ben. As his, you know, as ghost, courtesy of Doctor Strange. So, I mean, yeah. So this, and then also, so also, of course. But Spider-Man may actually be right about this. So miracle, because maybe the because the guy, maybe there's something more nefarious going on with this with um, with this guy coming back from that. Also, the art. Um, oh, because not a fan. Not, not a, fan. a fan of this thing. Oh, especially yeah. since the fact that issue one point two actually had counted. Four different colorists at once, and so which was. What, what, what's your grade for the overall series? Oh gosh, I'm giving the sucker. So right now, it's actually a D, and the, it's a D all around. But and the thing is, it's disappointing because, interesting enough, the, if you take the conversations, some of the conversations like they have myself, they're actually quite fascinating in terms of philosophical implications and, and you know, very in depth kind of stuff. Um, but there's all, but it's just that. It doesn't feel like Spider-Man should be saying this stuff to me because especially in the world he lives in. Because the way I kind of described it when I did a review for this on uh, whatever a spider can, it's imagine, if you will, a, a person <laughs> – imagine, if you will, a person from the Lord of the Rings who basically says, oh, I don't believe elves exist and anyone who does is an idiot, even though he lives in a world where elves are – there's more than enough evidence that they do and he himself has talked and talked with them that's kind of what this feels yes. like, like but is this series worse than the regular amazing spider-man is uh yeah but and it doesn't have to be because it actually has a very fast because the idea behind it is actually good it's just yeah. that the execution of it is just it's just kind of off it's just really bad but now another book that you're going to review I liked a lot. Oh, I did Spider-Man too. And Deadpool. I was surprised. Yeah, I was. Surprised. Number one was an A flat oh, out yeah. for me. I was surprised about, well, I was surprised. Well, in some people, it maybe the the sense of humor might not be everybody's cup of tea because Deadpool can be pretty. It was cool. mine. Can be, yeah. Loved it. I mean, I, I was surprised about how much I've been liking Spider-Man Deadpool because I didn't think it was going to be. Named. But yeah, it's, of course, when you get Deadpool, it's. You know, it's what you know. It's really fun. It's extremely hilarious. There's a lot of good one-liners in there. They're written by Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis, who, of course, they both worked on Deadpool, on Spider-Man, and Deadpool in the past. Um, there's a point in issue one. There's a whole thing about 
where where Deadpool decides to take um, Spider Man to visit Dormammu. Oh. Whoa. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I went to grab a spider prop. And... Yeah. But he went, he goes to take he, he takes Spider Man for Dormammu for, you know, your just for just for kicks. Or is it Dormammu? We don't know. Because it turns out it might not have been. But um, the, oh, and he also gets to fight Hydro Man, who apparently merged with the um, with the water treatment facility. So we get a lot of oh god, a lot of toilet humor. Toilet humor, absolutely, humor, literally, absolutely hysterical. Yeah, um, and there's so it goes a lot of and. Um, and with issue two, of course, oh, there's actually, the thing is, there's actually a very interesting subplot these, that Kelly is actually doing something interesting with Parker Industries yeah. because it turns out that Deadpool has been contracted by somebody to kill Peter Parker. But he, well, but he, for some reason, Deadpool does not know that Peter Parker, that Spider-Man is Peter Parker, even though for Deadpool, he's like ecstatic about Spider-Man and everything. But yeah, there, in issue two, um, they've got some stuff in there about, you know, how, um, you know, again, again, it says, you know, basically Deadpool's looking for Spider-Man and he find ends up fighting Miles Morales, fighting Miles Morales. And there's actually a great line in there where he's basically accuses Miles Morales of being a clone of Spider-Man. And Miles is like, I'm not a clone. And Deadpool goes, well, only a clone would say that. So, <laughs> which is great. A very funny book. Yeah. Hey, what's your What's your grade on? Oh it? yeah, I'm giving this about. Um, so far, I've given it about maybe like an A minus or something. Again, it's just the humor. Depending on because there's actually because Kelly can be honest both because the, there are very clear difference between the humor of Spider Man and the humor of Deadpool. Spider Man's is very kind of almost like ton and cheek, kind of we were, very kind of like you know have, what we we're going to have George review 2099. Are you reading that book? Anybody reading 2099? I've, I've, I have on my list, but I haven't actually been able to go through it yet. I'm several behind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have. I have. Oh, Zach, what's a great for 2099? What do you think? I'm giving it an A, man. I, I, this is a really incredibly well written book. The um, yeah. they've actually made the Inhuman uh, character somewhat interesting. Um, yeah. Do I know much about her? Not really. I'm a little bit fish out of water, but. Uh, I I, st- I decided to read it about a week ago, and it's good. It's good. It really is. V- yeah. Well, there, there's Spider Man. There. There. there you well go. Well done, Ashley. Um, <sighs> so, I I think it's probably Miles and Miguel are probably the two best written Spider Man books on the shelf right now. Mm-hmm. And and Spidey Deadpool. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I, have, I haven't read Spidey Deadpool. I'm kind of reluctant to read Spidey Deadpool because I, I'll be honest with you, Joe Kelly in Spider-Man has been so bad. What did he write during Brand New Day? Help me. Um, he, wrote, he wrote that god awful Black Cat uh, two-parter where they read yeah. Black Cat, where all Brad was sitting there saying was, "She's about sex," and everybody's like, "Shut up, Brad. Go home. You're drunk." <laughs> is that the milk bath one? No, that no, was no, that no. was Dan Slott. That was that Dan was. Slott. Or is it this... them breaking into the hotel? Yes. That oh, was okay. Now I know that one. one. Yeah, this is okay. where they broke into the hotels and had sex. Yeah. Because that was all that Black Cat function as a character. That was her function. Spider-Man 2099 is an A. Uh, let's see what else we've got. I've got Venom. There we go. I'll, I'll take Venom. I read uh, issue two to four tonight, actually. And I want to not like this book, but uh, I can't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like Venom um, as a Spider-Man villain, but I like Flash Thompson in Venom, so I'm conflicted. The art in this one, Ariel Olivetti uh, did issue four, which is the most recent one. Actually, he's done all of them. Yeah. I take that back. The art is very... Uh, there's there's Flash Venom right there. You went to Walgreens. That's a Walgreens exclusive is what that is. Yep. I actually uh, didn't go to Walgreens. I ordered online. The uh, Venom in Space is what would happen if Venom actually did something in the Guardians of the Galaxy book. And uh, it, it's got a tongue-in-cheek humor. Uh, he, they, They've named the symbiote. The symbiote uh, is called Clintar. I guess the, 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 the symbiotes are called Clintars. And sometime during the Guardians title, 
they cleansed the venom one, so they took the evil out of them. Yeah. Shit. Uh, yeah, it's odd. Oh, oh, it's odd. dude! I just reviewed um, last night. I just recorded an episode covering Planet of the Symbiots. Yeah, and nobody believed me that that Bendis retconned Planet of the Symbiots, yeah. but he did. He, he, and uh, the Clintars, which are the name of the symbiotes, uh, talk to Flash, and he talks to the Cosmos or something of I where people you. need have problems. It's like a, it's like a spider sense of the universe, if if you could describe it that way. Spiritual oneness. And, and the here, can you see this right there? Look at the art. Uh, Venom is talking to Flash. Like the symbiote will come off of him and have conversations with him. And that I guess that's one of the coolest things I like about so that. The, the, so the symbiote can now exist without a host temporarily or something. Right? Temporarily for like an hour or so, and uh, more. And he fought a panda, <laughs> <laughs> a space age panda. And again, I want to not like it, but the writing is good and the art is good. And it's just the concept that's him in space. I just don't dig. But look, he looks like Captain Kirk with a panda and a symbiote. I I I can't I, I want to hate it, but I can't. It's, it's a it's, sea book. It, it, it's a it's a sea. Well, it's a theater of the absurd. I mean, it, it is. And, and uh, like, again, referencing my recording last night, there's a, like a, 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 a page in the during Planet of the Symbiote. It's like I should hate this. Like, I should, but I'm not. I read all three of these today. Yeah, it's like it's like, um, yeah. Uh, there's certain things that you just, you want to hate, but you kind of come in at it, it, where it's so bad. It turns into good in its own way. Keeping, I'll give that a C. If you like venom and you like flash, go pick that up. There's worse books out there. Uh, keeping with the symbiote theme. Here's the carnage book written by our friend, Jerry Conway. Um, again, there's carnage right up in your grill. Uh, basically, Carnage uh, missed killing one of his early victims. The victim lures him to a mine. Uh, the mine collapses. Carnage goes down in it, uh, finds that there's a cult down in there. The cult is worshiping with the Darkhold book, which if you know Doctor Strange, and there was actually a Darkhold Midnight Suns mm -hmm. book. Back in the day. They're worshiping the Darkhold, uh, and there's Carnage is in the Darkhold book, which is a bad deal. And, and Carnage takes control of the worshippers and goes after uh, John Jameson, and he goes after uh, Eddie Brock as Toxin. There's a Hey Grandpa scene where they fight, blows up everything. Um, yeah. The book, I think, is a C also. It, it's, it's, it's where Carnage should be, unlike Venom. Venom in space, I don't. It's it's a bad concept, but I like Carnage going around the country and people like Eddie Brock and John Jameson chasing him. So I I think that's a good place for Carnage, but uh, it's just an average book in, in my opinion. I I think the I think it started stronger than it finished. Mm -hmm. Is anybody else reading Carnage? Mike, are you reading Carnage? I only probably read maybe like the first issue of the of the of the thing. I mean, it's good, um, but I just I mean, it's it's it, it's kind of petered out. Yeah. There, new uh, storyline right you know mm -hmm. one we didn't tackle uh and i haven't i'm not caught up on it spidey is anybody i actually Sp read a couple of issues of the thing it's really weird because it's like okay it's taking place during peter's high school years except it doesn't feel like it's in continuity with the actual high school it's years. obviously not 616 no and i mean it's Johnny, so johnny's, so johnny's, in, so johnny's one of the students at, when at, when Stacy's in, in high school, in high school, Harry goes to the same high school. Um, yeah. There's a whole thing about, I mean, you know, he fights the White Rabbit in the thing in the first issue, and also, I mean, he knows Doc Ock, but Doc Ock doesn't seem to know him. It's, it's, if you if you take away all that, yeah, it's not a bad. Book. Oh no, I mean, artistically it looks great. The art is beautiful. Oh yeah, especially if you art go, especially if you get some of uh, what I got to, to issue issue two with the Sandman. And he's the way he's dividing the pan where where the Britnick Bradshaw was dividing the panels up between, you know, making Sandman's parts of Sandman's body actually the, the panel divisions, 
Okay. I mean, what would you give that grade? What would you give that book a grade, Mike? Oh gosh, it's too, it's it's kind of hard. The B out of me. Yeah, I mean, probably about me, maybe a B minus or something. I mean, I, I yeah. mean, if you kind of like, it's designed if you're like for people for all eight. It's good for anyone who's not really into continuity or anything who just kind of likes a simple spider-man story it's good for like it's safe for like you know anyone of you know younger younger readers and everything else but it just don't go into it expecting that this is tied into any actual continuity of the actual of the main books i i think we've covered all satellites in a record yeah now now, one thing i this is new since we got jr on for satellites of any of these books do any of them interest you jr that we talked about no. <laughs> <laughs> Not a one? Not really. I mean, well, it's granted it's four bucks a pop. The only yeah. thing that's missing from JR right now is him lying down, as Steve Wacker once described him as doing. <laughs> uh, oh. but, at least, right. but yeah, it's interesting that some of these titles are actually, I mean... They're and more some, interesting than the, than, the, than the Amazing Spider-Man book. Than the book that they're spun oh, off from. I know, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the bar is incredibly low right now. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah <it's> true. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. I mean, mm-hmm. all right, we get to do this video style. Final thoughts, Mike. Uh, well, we got. I guess from based on what some of the uh, previews I've seen for next time, um, on, in the next issue, we're going to space <laughs> with Spider-Man. <laughs> This is now the oh, second time. Talking about this video pa- this podcast. I'm not going in space. This is the <laughs> second time we've seen Dan Slott take Spider Man in space. Mm hmm. Like, the hell is this? <laughs> well, we got to wait. Well, to be fair, we have to wait to read the rest of the issue. I but know. At the I same know. time. Don't, ju- don't judge the preview because if you <laughs> yeah. judge the preview, you're just a, you're just a bigot towards, towards uh, Spider Man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Final thoughts, Zach. Um. You know, um, I'll, I'll I'll part with a with a panel of of Venom and Scarlet Spider sitting sitting around watching TV, and Peter oh. Parker flashing his his wife. Back Whoa! Oh, <laughs> I remember that panel from the nineties. Jesus, uh, that's <laughs> Ashley. Final thoughts. With the current run, I feel yeah. like I can see the appeal. I understand why people like it. But, like, you know, we see Peter successful, we see all these good things happen. It hits all, it hits some good notes, but there's never anything to back it up. There's no character development, there's nothing to make you feel like the characters have earned their position or to make you feel emotionally invested in any way. So, as much as people will rant and rave about how spectacular it is, it's just, I've, with how much I've read... I guess in the last few years, I know that there's so much better out there. I know that a series like this has so much more potential. So I'm not, you know, I'm not going to settle for less. Very good. Very good. J.R., you get the last word for the final thoughts. What do you think, sir? I think it's time for Bernadette. (laughs) (laughs) Good night. Well done. Peace. That was our first Spider-Man Crawl Space with video webcast. Say hello. Good night, everybody. And our last, right? George, get better. Get better, George. Okay, let me hit...